Super Tech IT here once again. Um, you're probably familiar with uh, the original 8x8x8 LED cube. Uh, this one is sitting on one of my baseboards. And the detachable controller you may be familiar with. This is uh, one of my SMT controller boards. Very compact. And the cube base, of course, is completely passive. All the electronics are on the control board. So, with that in mind, um, I wanted to build an RGB cube. But the problem is that the, the electronics, um, there's a lot more, basically, to controlling an RGB cube. Because instead of having... Uh, 64 signals that you have to transmit uh, 64 plus another 8 uh, for the, the layers. With an RGB cube there are 200 signals. There's 172 uh, for just the, the colors themselves plus another 8 for your layers. So what I did is I decided to put most of the control circuitry on the baseboard. So as you can see it conforms to the exact same form factor as the original cube but the difference is that almost all the driving electronics um, and the transistors and everything else are on the baseboard. However it still does come to a header and what that allows us to do is that allows us the ability to use multiple uh, processor types. So, you know, we can hook it up to an Arduino, we can hook it up to uh, a ChipKit32. Um, I'm hoping later on maybe somebody will write some code for the Raspberry Pi or uh, Launchpad or something to that effect. Uh, what I've done though, once again, in order to eliminate wires, in instead of having to take your Arduino like this and run a bunch of wires up to the uh, the processor connector on the board you can of course do it this way uh, you can do that with your Arduino you can do that with your ChipKit 32 there's code for uh, both of those so if you've got one of these little guys here you can hook that up as well but the, the board comes with what I call the UNO Eliminator boards. And what these are is uh, just little boards where you can, you know, put an Arduino uh, Atmega 328P processor on it, or uh, a PIC32 microcontroller. Now, I didn't bother snapping these apart because I liked the idea of being able to just have one board, and if I want to run the PIC, I put it in that way. If I want to run the Arduino, I put it in that way. Very simple way to switch over. So the circuit originally was based on uh, Nick Schultz's design, which did use the uh, the ChipKit 32. So we'll just give that some power there. I reset it. So once again, uh, we've got a very nice, compact, um, basically almost portable, I do have a battery pack for it actually, um, so that it is actually portable. Uh, very easy to take somewhere if you want to, and it eliminates all those incredible vast amount of wires that you see in these projects. And uh, unfortunately, the color is going to be a little bit hard to see here because my camera kind of sucks at doing color uh, when it's being blasted right at it from a light source. Uh, but you get the idea. So this is running uh, Nick Schultz's uh, code on the PIC32 microcontroller. And 
then I saw this project by Kevin Dura, and he has a wonderful way of controlling his cube by sending everything out through the SPI. And what that does is it allows the, the processor, without very much coding or processor intervention, to take all of this parallel data and shoot it out through uh, a single serial bit. And so what I did was I took my board and I said, wouldn't it be great if we could run his code too? But the problem is, um, Nick's code runs the red, the green, and the blue, and bit bangs all of those into the circuit at once, at one time. Whereas Kevin's, all the data comes out one single bit. So it sends out the red, and then the green, and then the blue, and then the layer data. And it all comes out that one bit. So what I had to do was uh, put in small configuration jumpers here. I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, but what that does is it takes the, the output from the blue and puts it into the input of the green. And then, those. and then the next one takes the output of the green and puts it into the input of the red. So just by putting those two jumper caps on, this board has gone from triple data input to a single data stream input. Uh, because he also does his layers through the SPI, on the Arduino side, I had to put one additional shift register. And then that has the eight outputs for the layers. So that can just snap right on. Now for the standalone uh, Arduino, because we don't have the luxury of being able to just throw in an extra shift register, I did make some modified code of his, um, which simply puts the layer data out as parallel rather than uh, through the SPI. So, simple as that, just by switching uh, two jumpers and turning the Uno Eliminator around, we are now running the Arduino code from Kevin Dara on the same board. So we've got two completely different projects by completely different people that are able to be run on this one board without the miles and miles of wire that the original projects took up. Um, and even when they made, you know, sort of PC boards, it was several PC boards and, you know, or uh, in... Nick Stoltz's case, he made a nice PC board, but there's still the 200 wires that have to run to the cube from his circuit board. This, you mount the cube right to the board, so all that wiring is gone. Uh, it'd be fairly simple to, you know, drop an acrylic case over this or whatever it is that you might want to do. Um, you could even, if you wanted the electronics to be on the other side, you could uh, mount the cube to the bottom of the board. Uh, because it doesn't really matter where the front and the back are, because nobody's written any text effects or anything like that that would actually make you see that, well, it's actually backwards. So front to back, left to right, if that inversion is made by mounting the cube on the underside of the board, it wouldn't really matter. You could actually go ahead and do that. So I just wanted to give that quick demo. This is the uh, the RGB cube. Um, this is the version three revision four board that is currently available for sale. Uh, you can see my instructable or um, contact me directly by going to uh, theledcube.com and shoot me an email. I'll give you the current pricing pricing I don't put in the videos because it changes it changes depending on demand if you know if 20 people order a board all at once then the price is going to be less because I can get the manufacturer cheaper because I'm ordering 20 at once instead of five let's say you know or if a hundred people decide that they all want them at the same time the price point of, again is going to drop because I can get 10 made or 100 made a lot cheaper than I can have 10 made so you get the idea there. So anyway, this is 
the board that is currently available. Um, if you want one, give us a shout. There is a complete parts kit for the board. The board does arrive bare. Okay, your board would arrive looking like this with the uh, the Uno eliminators. There's two Uno eliminator boards of each type right on the bottom of the board. It's just perforated. You just uh, score it with a knife, uh, box cutter, whatever, and then just snap them off. Then your main board is up here. Okay, the, the parts kit is available on eBay. All you do is you search for supertech-it, do a search, it'll show you the parts kit, and it'll, the same vendor also sells the LEDs for this kit. Uh, so you know that you're getting, you know, the right LEDs, and it's 600 LEDs instead of a thousand. So they do that so that you can actually save a few bucks instead of forcing you to buy a thousand. They're saying, look, here's 600. That way you've got your 512 plus some spares, but you're not buying a bunch of LEDs that you don't need. Um, the parts kit is for the baseboard only. It does not include parts for the Uno Eliminator. That you have to get separately, but there's so few parts that you know there are going to be a lot of people that don't want to build the uno eliminators they just want to use their chip kit uno or they want to use their arduino uno um, and to save money there again for the people that don't need those parts they're not included in the basic parts kit for the base board okay so once again super tech it have yourself a great day bye bye